What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you everything that you need to know about Poland syndrome so that you can finally answer the question, what the hell is wrong with my chest? In all seriousness, guys, welcome back to my channel. But today we are going to talk about Poland syndrome. I'm gonna to try to give you everything, every question that I get asked frequently. This is gonna be like an FAQ type video. Um, usually I write a script for these YouTube videos and try to stick to it, but this is such a deeply personal topic that I figured it would just be more beneficial if I just kind of have a fluid stream of consciousness and just kind of riff. So if I ramble a little bit in this one, apologies. So first of all, what is it? Well, that's a really good question because nobody really knows. It's called Poland syndrome abnormality, Poland's abnormality. It's a birth defect that presents itself as a missing or partially missing or fully missing muscle in the chest, right? One of the pectoral muscles is missing. Now, that's about where the similarities in cases end because there is a laundry list of things that can be associated with Poland syndrome that still classifies Poland syndrome. Now, I have a super mild case. I'm missing half of the pec major, which is the major part of your pectoral muscles, right? I'm missing half of one. Only half of one, I'm not missing a full muscle. Uh, since I've kind of overdeveloped myself, it looks like I'm missing more than I actually am. But to classify something as Poland syndrome, you have the absence of the muscle in the chest, and then you have other things that can be associated with Poland syndrome. Um, winged scapula. I don't even know what that means, but I Googled it and that's one of the things that's associated with it. And I've had a lot of people reach out and say, yeah, I have a winged scapula. I don't know what that means. Uh, you can have a smaller hand or foot or arm on one side, on the affected side. Uh, you can have webbed fingers, webbed toes on the affected side. Um, you can have other muscles missing, like a lot of people are missing their lats on the affected side. So really it's kind of a combination of missing muscles characterized mainly by a muscle missing in the pec region. One of the pectoral muscles is missing. How many people have it? Well, if you Google it, it says something like one in 10,000. So it's really not a lot of people. It's pretty rare. And unfortunately, because of a combination of two things, it's very rare and it's not an actual medical problem. It's only, it's purely cosmetic. There's no effect of Poland syndrome that would need surgery or that would need really any sort of like medical treatment, which means there's not a lot of money in it, which means there's not a lot of research in it, which means we're still asking questions of YouTubers that have it basically. So one in 10,000 people. Now I have met since I started social media in 2017, um, I have met thousands, thousands of people with it. Um, they have messaged me and said, hey, I've been affected by this. I have the same thing. Our chest is the same, blah, blah, blah. I get that a lot. So yes, it's very rare, but yes, I've also met tons of people that also have it. What are the symptoms? Um, well, we kind of talked about this and how it presents itself, but um, I, I do have people that reach out to me and say, hey, I have this, this, and this going on. Do you think it's Poland syndrome? I'm, I'm obviously not a doctor and I don't want to tell somebody that they don't have it, but if you have like most, most people have an imbalance in their muscle from one side of the body to the other. One bicep is bigger. One tricep is bigger. One thigh is thicker. One arm is a little bit longer. One leg's usually a little bit longer. But if you have an underdeveloped chest muscle on one side and you're kind of like one, one of your, imagine one of your chest muscles is here and the other one is here. Uh, that may drive you crazy personally, but nobody's going to notice it. See, mine is like here and here because there's a whole, there's a whole muscle missing in between the two. So I, I tend to kind of uh, stay away from telling people that they have it or they don't have it. Um, a lot of the time we see something, uh, uh, what we would call a defect in our body much more than anybody else would. But if you do, if you do have a missing muscle in your chest. If you can feel one side and see that it's very solid, very muscular, full pectoral development. And then this side, whether it's like half, like mine, I have the upper portion of the chest, not the lower. And you can actually feel your ribs. You may have it, you may have it. Or if you have one of the other things that we mentioned, like you're missing your lat or you're missing, you know, maybe one hand smaller than the other. Again, I got very lucky and have a very minor case, but they do range kind of all over the place. 
But again, with the symptoms, since there's no actual, like there, there's no disease to it, there's no actual like physical ailment that goes along with it. Purely cosmetic, purely aesthetic, it's the way something looks, it's the way your muscles are built, inserted, things like that. It's not gonna cause a sickness of any kind. So there's really no symptoms that go with it, if that makes sense. What causes it? That is the million dollar question, billion dollar question, trillion dollar question. Like, I don't know. I don't know, nobody knows. I've heard a lot of, and I, I realize this is such a wealth of valuable information for people with pollen syndrome, but there's really not a lot of research on it. Again, because there is no illness, there is no funding for research, not a lot of people looking into this kind of thing. But I've heard several kind of schools of thought as to far, as far as what causes it. And a couple of them I believe, and a couple of them I just totally discount. Number one, it's genetic, I've heard that. Um, I don't have anyone in my family who has Poland syndrome. It has not been passed down from either side to me. Now, granted, I have never done like a 23andMe specifically for Poland syndrome. I don't even know if you could, but I've never, nobody has ever come to me and said, hey, your great, great, great grandfather has a picture by the pool and he's also missing a peck. Like that's never happened. Um, I don't think it runs in my family in any capacity whatsoever. So I don't think it's genetic. The one that I, there are two other schools of thought that I do give a little bit of credit to, and that is either the mother had the child when she was uh, older. My mom had me when she was about 40. Um, so that could constitute as her being older, bearing a child, child when she's older. Um, but I, again, it's kind of a maybe, maybe that's why. Uh, another kind of common theory is that the way the baby is positioned in the womb, maybe it doesn't, um, maybe blood flow is cut off to one side, therefore it doesn't develop as quickly. Again, seems plausible. Or maybe it's just a freak uh, genetic coding error. I, d I don't know. There's, there's really no way to, <laughs> there's no way to know. How has it affected me? There's a couple ways. Um, number one, it's tough to say because you know, any, anybody who has anything that makes them quote unquote different uh, is gonna feel similarly about this. And there are a lot of people who feel different that maybe have a more severe difference than I do. Maybe they're missing an arm, maybe they're missing a leg, maybe something like that. Um, so I do tread carefully on this because I do realize it's not a, a huge deal in the grand scheme of things. But when you do feel different, especially when you're younger in high school or the teenage years, it is very, uh, it's very hard. It's very hard. So I would say that it has affected me much more up here than it has actually physically affected me. Um, I, I would wager that it, it really hasn't physically affected me. Now, the mental effects of it, uh, the insecurities that come along with looking a little bit different or feeling inferior because you don't have a muscle that's, you know, you, you think of men in these huge barrel chests, you think of any superhero, they have these huge muscular chests and I, I knew that I would never have that. So I think there was there, there was definitely something that was kind of um, stunting almost about it. I, I kind of kept myself back. I was afraid maybe I would get injured a little bit easier. I feared that I was incapable or inferior from an athletic perspective. Um, and again, this is all stemming from my own thoughts, my own head. There was no research to support that. Uh, there still is not. Um, this is all just kind of the games that I played in my head because I knew I looked a little bit different. And um, I think that's, that's the biggest effect. And we'll talk about how it's affected my actual workouts a little bit later. But it definitely, it definitely held me back. And I think it made me, I think it gave me like a performance anxiety of sorts. Um, I was very shy to uh, show any athletic ability. I was very shy to like go up to bat in Little League. I was very shy to chase the ball in soccer. And um, that lasted like into my 20s, early 20s, like 21, 22. I was, still, I was still pretty shy about certain things, especially about being at the pool, things like that. So it definitely affected from a mental standpoint. How did I find out I have it? Well, I got really lucky. A lot of people, I've met a lot of people who go through life just not knowing what it is. And I was very lucky. I grew up, I've known exactly what it was ever since I can remember. 
uh, my mom and dad apparently noticed at the pool or at the beach or something like that when I was like two or three that I was developing a little bit of a dip in the chest. Um, and my mom took me to the doctor for everything. Um, so of course she took me to the doctor for that to make sure it wasn't something serious. Um, and he said, oh yeah, your, your son has Poland syndrome. And my mom apparently was like, oh my God, what is that? She'd never heard of it, obviously, because nobody's ever heard of it. And the doctor was like, oh, it's not a big deal. He's just missing a little bit of his pec. My mom was like, well, how is that gonna affect him? And my doctor said, literally, well, he probably just won't be a bodybuilder. Other than that, he'll be fine. Thanks for that. Why is it so noticeable on you? Okay, this is, this is actually an interesting one. Um, it's very noticeable on me because I am, I'm six feet tall and I have a frame. Look, I can put my wrist or my fingers almost all the way around my wrist, right? It's almost touching. Um, I, have, I have a relatively small frame. I, I, am, I am a narrow built man, uh, six feet tall, pretty lanky. Um, but I lift weights, I've lifted weights for 13 years and I put on more muscle than my body uh, ever knew it was going to carry. Um, so my, my, I'm carrying more muscle mass than my frame, um, again, is meant to. So because of that, if, if I didn't lift weights and I was my quote unquote natural self, I'm still very natural, but I'm carrying more muscle mass. If I was the 145, 150 pounds that I would be without weight training, uh, you probably wouldn't notice it. But because I have overdeveloped the upper pec and the, the, the non-affected side, I've overdeveloped my shoulders, I've developed every muscle, it stands out because every muscle is developed. So of course you're gonna really notice the one that's just not there. How has it affected your workouts? Well, so this is, this is a funny one because I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Because the, re the reason I don't know is because I've never had two pectoral muscles. I've only had the missing half. So I don't know how it's affected my workouts. I can guess, but I don't really know. I do wonder, you know, my, when I was at my strongest, when I was lifting my heaviest, uh, my bench press was around 365. It was 365 was my one rep max. Now, if I had two pecs, would it have been 405, 415? Or would it have been 365? Am I pushing the same amount of weight that I could uh, if I if I wasn't hindered by half of a pec missing, I don't know. I don't know if the body compensates that well. I don't know if I have a limitation that I'll just never really realize because I'll never know what it's like to have two. It's not like I was born with two perfectly good pecs and tore one. Now I'm limited. It's I've had this my entire life. So whatever limitations, they're learned limitations. I I, I don't I don't know them. Um, now, that being said, I do get impingements in my shoulders and um, it, I, I, it's, it's tough to say because it's on the left side too. I get an impingement right across the front delt and I get an impingement on the right side right across the front delt. And a, a shoulder impingement, you can get that from like reaching overhead the wrong way to grab something from a cabinet or you can get it from weight training. I wonder is this side working more, the side that's not affected? Is it working harder and therefore it's putting more stress on the joint because there is more muscle mass there and it's able to work more efficiently? I don't know. Maybe that doesn't really make sense to me, but maybe. Or is this side, am I getting in on this side because uh, there is more muscle recruitment having to happen. There's more muscles having to work because there's less muscles there. Or am I just getting impingements because I, I, I get shoulder impingements. I'm just prone to them. I don't know if it's because of that. The one thing, and this kind of goes back to how it affects me. The one physical um, thing that I, I can definitely nail down as a result of the missing pec is there's, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. There is this tendency for, so this is the side, you can't really tell. This is the side that is not missing a pec. This is the side that is missing the pec. And it feels sometimes like this side is pulling this way and this side is pulling back. And that means my left hip wants to go forward. My right hip wants to tuck up. And it's basically like 
if you've ever seen a structural therapist or um, uh, been to physical therapists, they'll talk about rotations in your body. It's like my body wants to rotate this way because there is no pec pulling this way that would counter that rotation. So the fact that this muscle is present, it's there, it's tight, and it's pulling. So I kind of, if, if I sit on a plane for a long time or I take a long car drive, sometimes I do feel a little lopsided when I get out. But again, maybe maybe other people feel those rotations. I don't know because I've had them my whole life. Can you get it fixed? I don't like this question. Um, I don't. I don't like... It's not that I don't like this question. It's I don't like the way it's phrased because asking if I could get it fixed implies that something's wrong and I don't like to think something's wrong with me. It's just different. It's not wrong. It's different. So to say, can you get it fixed? Could I change it? Yes, you could. Uh, there are a bunch of ways you could change it. And I have full transparency. I've looked at all of them at some point in life. Uh, when I was around 18, I told my parents, I really want to get it fixed. It's, I'm so insecure about it. I really just want to get it fixed and then I'll go to college and then life will be better and then I'll be not afraid to take my shirt off and I'll be able to accomplish all the things that I've hoped for in life. And that, um, that, that was kind of how I saw things going, was if I could just get this thing fixed, I wouldn't be held back anymore. I could, do, I could chase the things that I want in life because I wouldn't be afraid, I wouldn't be insecure. Um, so I did go, I did go to several surgeons, uh, plastic surgeons and see if, if there was something, an implant or something they could do. And, um, I obviously decided not to do it. Uh, but there, there were several options. There was a basic silicone implant, which is basically a breast implant. And they would have taken a cast of the left pec and kind of mirrored it to create the right pec. But then there was concern over if I was going to keep weight training, the, the left side would keep growing and the right side upper pec, which is a real muscle, would keep growing while the synthetic implant would never grow. So there was always a fear of kind of that unevenness. And then um, one of the doctors that I met with suggested that I let my muscles atrophy a little bit, which is really strange coming from a doctor. You, would never think that but the idea was if i let this atrophy a little bit don't train it uh don't do any weight training for like six months let this kind of come down a little bit so it's not so overdeveloped then they would be able to kind of match it and make it more smooth um and then there was one doctor who suggested you know in in 15 years we'll be able to actually grow you a muscle the the, the technology will be there and it's it's not been 15 years yet. So if I change my mind, which I don't see that happening in a few years still to come, <laughs> maybe maybe I'll reach back out then. And the third option that I heard uh, was the most disgusting option. Uh, and that was the, uh, the surgeon told me they could take fat from another part of my body. And he literally said, we can lay it in strips to fill in the gap, almost like bacon. And uh, I obviously, uh, didn't didn't want to do that. Do I have advice for people that have it? Uh, I love, yeah, I do, I do. Um, look, if you have this, I, I just know that I, um, look, if you have anything that makes you feel different, makes you feel like you're the only one, um, just trust me that I know what that feels like and you're not alone. I've met, I've met tons of people that feel this way and I have, I have been there. I know exactly what you're feeling. Um, the one thing, the one piece of advice, my favorite piece of advice to give, and unfortunately it's advice that I kind of stumbled upon in life my own. I was never given this advice, but I like to pass it along because I, I learned it. And that is build confidence. Build confidence, whatever it takes. Um, for me, confidence came from the gym. Now I know the gym is not for everyone. Uh, the gym is a very, very hard place to go to if you're insecure about your body. Uh, so I'm not going to suggest that that's the only way. It worked for me, it might work for you. I'm not gonna suggest that's the only way though. Um, what I will suggest is get really good at a certain skill um, because skill 
can build confidence. Um, if you get really, really good at something, um, you'll build confidence around that one thing, whether it's writing, whether it's speaking, whether it's weightlifting, whether it's, um, I don't know, uh, it could, could be anything, painting, sculpting, um, anything. I got really good at, uh, at weight training. Uh, I got really good at bodybuilding. I did really well when I competed uh, one time. And I got really good at, um, I got really good at writing. Uh, I'm a bodybuilder with Poland syndrome and a dyslexic screenwriter. I don't know, I don't make sense. But getting good at these things built a lot of confidence. And if you can build confidence in one area, it will bleed over into other areas. Um, and that's, that was kind of what helped me build confidence uh, through my early, mid, late 20s. And now I'm 30 and uh, I'm perfectly confident. I don't, I don't think I have any self-confidence issues at all. Um, I still have wicked body dysmorphia. I don't think that ever goes away. But yeah, get, get yourself really good at something. Become an expert in something. And that, that confidence will it'll bleed over into other parts of life. I promise. And hopefully it bleeds over into uh, a, a part of your life where you can say, I'm, I'm totally secure in myself. I have no insecurities anymore. I mean, everybody's always going to have insecurities, but you won't have insecurities surrounding the way you look or a missing peck anymore. And that's, that's when life gets, it gets really good. I promise. <laughs>